The Winnebago Revel isn't cheap, but one of the ways we justified buying our van is to replace one of our vehicles with the Revel. So this video is about whether or not the Revel is or is not a daily driver. But before we even start to drive this thing, there's one modification that every Revel owner needs to do, and that is disconnect the center speaker from the stereo system. It's an easy modification. It'll take two minutes. There's just a disproportionate amount of noise coming from that center speakers. You can't even hear the door speakers. So all you need are a couple screwdrivers. So the Mercedes comes with some decent speakers. You have two fairly large ones in the door. You have a couple tweeters, one on each side, I believe, and you have this horrible speaker right here underneath this big grill. Before I take the speaker out, I thought we need to do a little before and after just so you could hear it for yourself. So much better. So much more bass coming from the doors. A lot better than the pingy sound we'd get here. So you first start with the smaller screwdriver and kind of just pry it underneath and slowly lift that grate up. And then I take the bigger screwdriver and get a little more leverage. And basically this thing is just going to pop up. As you see, it's made to be removed pretty easily. So from the size of this, you'd think it'd be a pretty big speaker, but oh, look at that little hole. That's all we get is a little two inch speaker. It's just pushed in with these clips and all you have to do is pry it. It's got these little ball joints and then it's held on by two wires and they come out. And because they're in a little plastic casing, um, there's no exposed wire. So you don't have to worry about putting them down back in that hole. So this just clips in. So now that we removed the speaker and our sound system sounds so much better, um, we're going to talk about whether or not a Rebel can be a daily driver. And my definition of a daily driver is kind of twofold. Is one, how easy it is to drive. Is it easy to drive through town? How's the vis visibility around the coach? Um, is it easy to get in and out? Does it feel cumbersome, the size? The second one is, are you able to do the things that you normally do? Like, can you go to, through the drive-through at the bank? Can you go through the drive-through at Starbucks? How about parking at grocery stores? And we're gonna follow it off. The third one is kind of things that you didn't really think about. I will say if you're commuting with over four people, then it's probably not gonna happen. You have two seats up front, uh, a bench seat in the back, and it's only, um, Lap belts, not shoulder harnesses. Number one, ease of drive. On a day-to-day -day basis, how easy is it to sit in the driver's seat, navigate around, how's your visibility at the side, out the back, switching lanes, speeding up, slowing down, traffic, you name it, just how easy is it to drive in town? Um, I will say for those SUV drivers sitting up higher, it makes it a lot easier. The front windshield is huge. The side windows are great. There's really no blind spot from the driver's seat forward. So the visibility up here is fantastic. What you need to worry about is what's kind of on your side and in the rear. It's nice that Mercedes has these uh, blind spot detectors. So if somebody comes up from your rear and comes to your side, uh, a little red light will come on uh, the side view mirror. The uh, blind spot detection is great. The re out the rear, um, it's pretty good. You can kind of see a little bit. So from the front seats forward, the visibility is fantastic. Uh, from the front seats back, although the Revel is fairly limited to what you can see, the technology with Mercedes and the electronics um, with the lights coming on, um, the blind spot detection uh, makes up for the lack of visibility when you're driving a van. Another aspect is the technology with cell phones and phones and integration with the radio and maps. Um, this does connect to your phone really easily. It can guide you. You have Hey Siri to navigate you. So as far as hands-free, uh, the Revel is an A+. So parking the Revel. As you see, the Revel is about seven, a little over seven feet wide. 
quite a bit wider than the Acura here, but it fits in this normal size parking lot just fine, uh, especially next to this F-150. Um, you know, it's not that much wider than this. So the average passenger car is about 14 and a half feet long. The Revel measures about 19 and a half, so it's quite a bit longer than your average car. But if you see, if you put it next to a Ford F-150, it's not that much longer than the Ford F-150. So as far as parking it in any parking space, it's a breeze. We got the width and the length. Now we need to talk about height. Uh, Winnebago says these are about 10 feet, maybe a little under 10 feet, but you gotta watch out for things like this because there's no markings on this. So going through drive-throughs, you just gotta be really vigilant and make sure you're gonna clear everything. Most of the banks don't necessarily mark the height, but accessing the drive-through, super easy on the Revel. So because the Revel is diesel, you have a few less options as far as um, fuel stations. <laughs> um, but most of the fuel height, as far as the height elevation, is no problem. This one's 12.6. Um, so you just have to be aware that this is a diesel vehicle and to always put in diesel. I know coffee is a daily routine for a lot of us and uh, most of your Starbucks, you're probably gonna have to park and walk in because there's a lot of height restrictions and ordering and picking up. So fast food, Starbucks, places like that, you're probably gonna have to park and walk in. The Revel's really easy, especially backing in. You have this uh, rear view camera. It shows you, basically guides you in the direction that you need to go. So backing into a parking spot is super easy. Another nice thing about the 2020 Revel is you have a side door opener on your key fob. Makes it a lot easier for daily driving and loading your groceries. My, what a difference a day makes. Springtime in the Rocky Mountains. So, things you probably didn't think about with the Revel being a daily driver, I'm going to reference the Sprinter operating instructions, specifically page 115. And I quote, if this vehicle is predominantly used for short distances, hence daily driver, or extended non-operational times, this could lead to a malfunction in the automatic cleaning function for the diesel particulate filter. As a result, permanent blocking of the diesel particulate filter may occur and fuel may also accumulate in the engine oil and cause engine failure. If you mainly drive short distances, hence daily driver, you should drive on a freeway or go for a country drive for 20 minutes every roughly 300 miles. This facilitates the diesel particulate filter burnoff process. So the way you monitor it is you scroll on your dash to service, um, select that, scroll down to particle filter, and then it will display on your dash. As you see, I'm at it roughly 88%. So probably in a few days of daily driving, it's gonna be closer to 100%, in which case I need to go on a country drive, as they say. It really doesn't take that long, probably 10, 15 minutes at the most. What happens is your exhaust system heats up and it burns out all those particular matters <laughs> and uh, so cleans it out. Basically you go from 100% full to zero. So if you normally drive long distances, you don't have to worry about this. Only if you're driving a uh, Revel as a daily driver, you need to just pay attention to this. So is the Revel a daily driver? Absolutely. Super easy to drive, very intuitive, um, very reliable. So basically I would have no hesitations about uh, driving a Revel as a daily driver. Thanks for tuning in to my videos. Uh, for other Revel videos, take a look over here. Uh, please subscribe to the link below. Give me a thumbs up. That's always helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write them down below. Thanks again.